Hello everyone. So, as we all know, last week we saw the absolute horrible attack at the gay nightclub Pulse in Orlando, Florida at the hands of Omar Mateen, uh, a fundamentalist Muslim who went up into the nightclub and proceeded to kill 49 people and then was taken out by the police. And originally, I had planned to do a video explaining the complexities of this issue, and that the left and the right are wrong on both accounts. Uh, there is more to this issue than simply gun control. There is more to this issue than simply banning all Muslims from the United States. Now, if you would like to see a video explaining the complexities and go beyond the rift of left and right on this issue, I would suggest going to the Amazing Atheist YouTube channel and checking out his response to the Orlando attack. I think it is very well thought out. I think it is a very nuanced approach, and I generally, roughly speaking, I would say that I I agree with what he is proposing. I agree with uh, what he said in that video. This video will be a response to the disgusting and deplorable behavior by activists at Missouri University who made this all about pushing their ideology and went beyond what was acceptable. And this story comes from The Advocate. The time two white gay men heckled a Latina at a pulse visual. And for those of you who aren't aware, The Advocate is a self-described pro-LGBT publication that is typically posting up news going on that is or LGBT oriented. Tiffany Malicio, that is the activist in question, wanted to go to the visual at the University of Missouri at Columbia because she thought it would be a safe space for her to honor the victims of the Pulse shooting. She wanted to read the names. She thought some people might have trouble pronouncing the Spanish names properly, so she volunteered because, quote, they deserve to be spoken correctly. Malicio also wanted to raise the voice of LGBT Latino people who, because of the feeling of the attack on both of their communities, are experiencing the grief differently. The graduating Mizzou senior was scared as she took to the stage and saw the crowd. It was a large, larger than she thought it would be, and unlike what she expected, predominantly white and from the town of Columbia instead of the university population she felt comfortable in. Malicio says... She lives just seven minutes away from Ferguson, Missouri, where Michael Brown was killed by police and was on campus uh, and a part of racial injustice protests at Mizzou in 2015. Those experiences have left her more aware of the dynamics of race in society and her vulnerability as a queer woman of color. Now, I have to ask the writer of this piece... Are you reporting the facts, or are you pushing an ideology? Because you don't really sound like you're reporting the facts when you make mention of, oh, she is now more aware of her surroundings as a queer woman of color. Also, what difference does it make if the crowd is predominantly of one race? If people show up to a visual... Does it really matter what race they are? If it's a predominantly black, predominantly white, predominantly Asian, what difference does it make of the predominance of the racial background of the crowd? I don't think that that is important or relevant to this story. I don't think your bias is necessary to convey the point of this story. Let's carry on. Oh, you'll love her response. I am afraid of white people. That is a fact, Melicio tells the advocate via phone. Because as a student on campus, I've been yelled, Welcome to America, countless times by white men. 
Melicio's background is Puerto Rican and Guatemalan. But I felt that it was necessary to put my fear aside for a moment to honor the people that were just lost. Because at the end of the day, they may have been LGBTQ, but they were also brown, and that needed to be said. Melicio, here's the problem. You just admitted to being afraid of white people because of some students chanting Welcome to America at you, who happen to be white men. Do you understand that you are basically making an assumption about all white people based on your experiences with, say, maybe a handful, not even 1% of the population of the United States of America, not even 1% of the population on college campus, you are going to make your assumption, your fear, you're going to base your fear off of your interactions with a couple of people. That makes you racist. And no one is denying that the victims were primarily Hispanic and Latino. But here's the problem, you fucking moron. They weren't killed because of their race. They were killed because they were fucking LGBT. They were killed because a crazy fundamentalist religious person went out of their way to fucking murder them. Because his crazy-ass fucking religious ideology made it so warped that he couldn't see what he was doing was absolutely fucking disgusting and deplorable. That's why they were murdered. But go on, Miss Melicio. Please, tell me more about how you think that this is all about fucking race. How race is just absolutely the most important and the only factor that really matters in this whole affair. Please, go on. And lo and fucking behold, what she feared is exactly what happened. Melicio started the speech reacting to the fact that the crowd was predominantly white, and then continued to discuss facts about the LGBT movement and the involvement of people of color. She also noted that she wished there were just as many people from this rally focused on racial justice, all done in a calm, somewhat timidly powerful manner, and all generally received well by the crowd, except for a couple of guys and some hateful people on social media. Those would be the normal people who think it is absolutely batshit insane to bring up race when race is not relevant to the discussion, and race is not what this is about. This isn't a discussion about fucking race. It's a discussion about religious extremism, fundamentalism, and its incompatibility with a free society that allows people to sleep with whoever they fucking want to and don't have a religious code of fucking conduct written into the rule of law which prescribes death as punishment. You fucking halfwit. College Fix, a conservative website, published the video of Malicia's speech and the reactions of two men identified as Carl Brezidine and his husband, Daniel, in a report titled Mizzou race activists hijack Orlando Vigil as gay community rebukes her. But did she hijack an event where she was encouraged to speak at, at, out about issues? Or were a couple of men just closed-minded about the thorny issue of race? Or here's an idea. Was Tracy Malicios the one being closed-minded? You know, the person who admitted that she was scared afraid of white people because they chanted welcome to America at her on campus. Do you think maybe she's the one who's closed-minded for openly saying that she does? she's afraid of white people just because of the experiences she's had from some guys on campus? Do you think maybe she is the one who's being closed-minded? But, but of fucking course not. Of course you don't. Of course she's not the one being closed-minded. No, it's, it's the guys pointing out how closed-minded and bigoted what she was saying was. No, it's, it's them. They're the closed-minded ones. They are closed-minded.
Not her. No, no. No, no, no. A self-described queer woman of color being bigoted and close-minded? Well, of course she can't be bigoted and close-minded. Of course not. You are being bigoted because you're white cisgender and you're a male. So therefore, well, you are oppressing her. You piece of shit scum. In the video, Melicio says to the crowd, As much as it is awesome that there's so many people here today, but it's like, who are you here really for? Oh, maybe they're there for the fucking victims that were just gunned down in a fucking nightclub by an Islamic fundamentalist terrorist. Maybe that's who they're there for, you dipshit. And then some brave woman responded, we're here for everybody. Because that's essentially who they were there for. They weren't there to receive a lecture about race, about politics, about racial tension. They weren't there for that. They were there to honor the memory of those who were murdered by a terrorist. But that's not good enough for Tiffany Melicio. Then Brizadine is heard yelling at Melicio, We are here to be uniting, not dividing, which is what you're doing now. Of course, the social justice warrior crowd responded with dissatisfaction, and then cheers as a Mizzou staff member begins to address him from the stage. So if you were not comfortable with the fact that people who are, were murdered were Latino people, that is a personal problem, said the staff member identified by College Fix as Stephanie Hernandez Rivera. You can't be an ally to one person or part of a person. Well, if that's the case, Stephanie, then you should have no problem just completely ignoring the fact that they were Latino or and Hispanic. You should be okay with that because you're making it very, very much about their race but I have yet to really hear anything about their actual sexuality, who they identify as sexually through their orientation. I, I don't hear you making mention of that, so take your own advice, you hypocrite. Furthermore, I don't think anyone has a problem with them being Latino. I think what the problem is is that they don't like when people like your friend Tiffany tell them that they're racist because they didn't attend their fucking rallies beforehand. They think that they are being bigoted and racist because they feel the need to make this all exclusively about race. You guys are the ones completely erasing their sexuality for their race, which for which they were murdered. They were not murdered because of their race. Again, they were murdered because of their sexuality. But this escapes you because you're so monumentally retarded in your reasoning. Brizzardine went on to say, We're all hurt, but I'm tired of our community, and I'm not talking about just the LGBTQ community here but also our community here in Colombia, our community in Mizzou. Everything has to be divided into color. Brizzadine's husband agreed. I expected the community to come together. Everyone. I got someone speaking on stage that tried to make it all about her culture. And that's a common thing now. Her culture was directly affected. No, it fucking wasn't. No, it wasn't affected. Her culture was not fucking affected. You're making this about race when it's not about race. You're not being intellectually honest, and you fucking know it. You are using the deaths of innocent people murdered for their sexuality to grandstand about race, and I fucking will not have any of it. I am not hearing your bullshit, the advocate. Melicio says she 
shut down after Brizadine heckled her, and that the experience has left her hurt. She says her intent was not to divide people over the issue of color, or was it really, but to make sure that it was mentioned. Before she spoke, she says she was probably the only person to specifically mention that the victims were Latino, that they were specifically her culture. At the end of the day, I'm a brown woman that went up there and said it, and I got booed, and I got called a lot of mean names. Oh, you special, special little snowflake, you. And people agreed, or they didn't understand what I was trying to say. Perhaps they didn't understand what you were trying to say because you openly questioned their motives for being at the vigil, you know, to commemorate the lives lost. And you also said some shit like this. I was really nervous to get up here because there's a lot of white people in the crowd. <laughs> and that wasn't a joke. I wish this many people came out to our racial demonstrations, but I thought I'd take the moment to just like list out some facts that many of you probably don't know um, because you're white. As much as it is awesome that there's so many people here today, but it's like, who are you really here for? So why don't you tell me, Tiffany, who are you really there for? Are you there for the victims of Pulse? Or are you there for yourself to grandstand about race and bitch about how people don't go to your fucking rallies? I'm curious to know.